drums and stereotypes to making sure that the butts are wet. Boy, girl, mom and dad want grown up time, you're going mad. It's a trip, but we'll guide you through with tips and tricks for boys and girls too. Hello and welcome back to Boy, Girl, Mom and Dad. Hello. I'm Lauren. And I'm Nick. And today, episode 26, we are going to talk about a positive twin mom post. There are so many things out there that are negative about having twins, not from us, but (laughs) from other people, whether they post it or just say it straight to your face. People say the wildest things straight to your face when they find out you're having twins. So we just wanted to put a message out there about all the things we love about having twins, both as parents and what's a beneficial of like the twins having each other. And also it coincides with our twins birthday. This week they this turn week? two. Yeah. Crazy. Mhm. It's flown by, but it's also not flown by. <laughs> I mean, it, I think it really is true what they say about the days are long but the years are short. I honestly cannot believe that they are turning two. Um, but yeah, they're growing and we're happy. They're so tall. <laughs> they are tall. I'm not sure how tall yet. We haven't had their annual checkup to see their height they're yet. Each, they're at least six feet. <laughs> we actually, uh, this is our first episode recording back after being back from our big trip to London and Paris. And that was our, their last lap infant flight. And we did get a question from one of the flight attendants about how old they were. I was like, hey, they're not two yet. And yes, they are kind of big for their age. <laughs> I think the flight attendant was asking to know, but Lauren seems to think they were asking to make sure that they were cheap enough to be free. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. They would have caught that at the ticketing booth, babe. Maybe. They didn't ask us for uh, details or birth certificates or anything. We have... Yeah, but we gave passports. That's true. That's true. But it was whenever Nick asked if we could have like the bassinet on the way back, and they asked, how old are they? Which to me said that they were thinking about it. Yeah. I don't know. I mean, RIP, our budget for traveling, you know? Not just this trip. I mean, like, never free tickets for them again yeah Mm. it's not like we were trying to have you seen the videos of the parents like sneaking in their kids in disneyland pretending they're under three yeah which if you didn't know kids yeah kids are free until they're three years old uh, at disneyland which is why we're taking them to disneyland this week it'll be fun it does help but regardless if you're paying for a ticket to get into disneyland it's expensive right now it is expensive uh, okay, so if you're joining us this week for the first time, like I said, our names are Nick and Lauren, and we have fraternal twins. I don't think I said that, but we have boy girl fraternal twins, Cypress and Olive, and we love them. And they are the ones who inspired this whole podcast. We wanted to talk about parenting, kind of the twin niche. And um, yeah, I felt kind of alone in my motherhood journey just because I felt like my friends were either having boys or girls. And here I was with a boy and a girl, so I didn't have kind of like a club to join. So this is a club for everybody, and we're glad you're here. Before we get into the topic each week, we have a tiff, a friendly tiff. And so uh, I'm going to bring this week's tiff. And it is when you have a list on your phone, say a grocery list per se, do you remove them all after you check them off? For me, the answer is yes. Otherwise, it just creates a never-ending list. What do you do, Nick? Looking directly into your camera over there, I see you. Before I answer, I want you to know that there's a brand new grocery reminders list feature that was just released on Apple, and I'm very excited for us to use it. What Lauren's talking about is using a note in the notes application to keep a running checklist of things that you need to pick up, like on a grocery list. And it has a feature limitation. The limitation is if you check something off, it doesn't automatically uh, disappear because it's not a to-do list. It's intended to be a note where you keep notes and not delete them. So do I delete them by habit? No, but I hate that they're there. And if I thought about deleting them, I would, but I think we just need to move to reminders. So we're kind of on the same page here, but in my opinion, it's the application that's punching me in the face a little bit and betraying me. It's not me. Okay, but it, so it bothers you, but not enough to do anything about it. Also, yes, because when do I check it off? When I'm at the grocery store, well, buying you don't things. need to do it there. Like for me, when I don't do I, nec- do it? 
I don't necessarily want them to check it off and like you can move it to the bottom or something, but I don't want it to disappear because sometimes I might accidentally check something off and I didn't get it or I checked it off thinking I got it and I didn't and I go through and make sure I actually got everything that I needed. But I will- Did you just switch sides in your own argument? No, no, no. I You asked me a question that I wasn't ready to answer yet. I remove everything like when I get home or when I start adding to the next grocery list. But just also to preface this, it's very helpful. We do have a shared note for groceries and we both put stuff on it. So it is it is a great idea, but I often end up doing the cleanup for it. Clean up on aisle two, AKA our note. Mm. Well, congratulations on your new baby reminders grocery list that I'm gonna be creating for us this week. You didn't know this, it's funny you picked this tiff, but I was going to do this this week. So we're never gonna have this problem again. And there's an undo button. So if you check something off you don't mean to, you can click undo I, and it reappears. So no, I did notice that because I I frequently would make mistakes in my notes and then I would just have to shake the iPhone like you know, looking like a crazy person because that's the only way it would be like, oh, did you do something wrong? And I'm like, yes. But now I did notice the undo feature and it's amazing and I really appreciate it. Yeah, that's actually not new. I think they just made the button more apparent, but it's But it's it wasn't there. always there because the, I had to- the I little literally loop arrow? I had to research how do I go back when I on a note, and it so my it wasn't always there from their initial mm. creation. Anyway, yeah, good tiff. I think that uh, if we, if we want to continue with this tiff, I I want to ask what constitutes being put on a grocery list. Like what are, what are the types of things we put in that <laughs> note? Are they always groceries that we need to pick up? Sometimes it's a list that I if I'm I order a lot of groceries online from Amazon Fresh or Whole Foods pickup or even like a Ralph's pickup, which is Kroger brand. And I will often check out like you can buy other things on Amazon Fresh, but also it then then food. Like you can buy cards, you can buy um, you know, like to go containers for food and stuff like that. But if I'm already on Amazon, I'm like, oh, I need to buy a black t shirt for Cypress type of thing. So I do often put funky things on there that may not be a grocery item, but they're there to remind me when I'm looking at it. To remind me. Wow, I wasn't even thinking about that. So you That's you won the musical theater. I, yeah. Um, another great feature of this reminders list we're going to have is you won't be able to do that. So it's just going to be what? one long list of things to check off. No more spaces. No more throwing things to the bottom of the note. Mm-hmm. One running grocery list. It's well, be I actually wrote down to talk about this because it's very uh, twin specific, but you know how a lot of parents, regardless of if they're twins, will keep track of when a baby goes to the bathroom and when a baby eats and sleeps and all of that. Well, we did that for twins, which is really hard. And we wrote on a piece of paper. And at the time, like, you know, my parents were here to help, your parents were here to, here to help. So, like, we kept a piece of paper just, like, actually on this. I don't know if you can see it in the – no, you can't see it in the video. But it's a little desk thing that we kept a notebook for – one for Cypress, one for Olive. And people would write down, you know, when they ate, how much they ate, all that stuff. And then we moved it to a note when it was just you and I. And the note got so long to where it was hard for it to function <laughs> because it was so big. Um, and that's what it honestly made me think about. Yeah. I like that you write those things down, though. I just think they belong away from the grocery list. Yeah, okay. That's fine. Maybe we need a note that's for shopping lists and a reminders list that's for the grocery list. Also, this is a tiny thing. I wish we were so specific with our grocery list that when I went to the grocery store, I didn't have to ask. And whatever we both put on there, we do need to buy. You know what I mean? mean? Like all the extra stuff I have on there? Yeah. Well, also there's like some... Sometimes we'll put like sugar or things on there that like we're almost going to need, but don't really need yet. It's like I have, I find myself having to ask sometimes like, Hey, do we actually need this right now? Which partially defeats the purpose of the list. Like how beautiful would it be? Like if I just knew on my way home from somewhere, Oh, I'm already going to stop and do this return it at whole foods. There's five things on the list. I'm going to get all five things and I never have to ask. Well, we could just make three sections of you know, need now, about to need type thing. Because also, it's good to know that if you're just going in to pick up a couple things, like we sure. need eggs and milk today, what are the most, like, most important things? But yeah. I will, this brings another question, and then we need to get off this topic. Uh, yeah, we but, do. Um, do you buy something when it's about to be out or whenever it is out? 
because I think we're a little bit different because I probably preemptively buy I'm like okay this is almost out I'm gonna buy it whereas I think you operate more on the ladder of like it's out I need to buy it now I mean yeah I batch in my mind it's like oh there's four or five things I need I'm gonna go get them so I don't yeah but it's often and also we live so close out. to the grocery store I'm like if something's run out I'm just gonna walk over and get it so it's we, never an emergency we for are me. walking distance from like every major grocery store it's great yeah but I will say you you operate on the it's out i need it but you don't necessarily do that with gas obviously because you're not out here running out of gas all the time but we do buy gas differently i would probably get it when i'm at around half a tank and you're probably once it's like i don't know you have 20 miles left that means you're getting gas twice as much as i am do you much time that ways yeah but i also read something where if you get gas um, whenever the tank isn't full, there's less air in it, so you're actually getting more gas in than you would if you were just filling a whole entire tank. Hmm. No. It wasn't in the study you read? I mean, it makes sense that you're burning, like your miles per gallon is worse the heavier your car is. So like the more gas you have in your gas tank, the worse mile per gallon you get. Um, but I haven't heard the air thing. That doesn't really make sense to me. Hmm. Okay. Maybe we'll have to research it and get back to you. I'm no scientist. Okay. All right. Let's get into the meat of today's episode, the meat and potatoes. This episode is going to be about twin experience and the positive things that come from it. And I could start with the children, but I'm going to start with the parents because you as the parent matter. And obviously I said twin mom, but twin caregiver, twin dad, twin whoever, you matter, and these are some benefits that you may experience having twins. So the first one is kind of just a laugh, but there was a study done back in 2011 by, I think it was the University of Utah. I'll link it for you so you have it. But it says that twin moms live longer, LOL, because there's a lot of sleep lost and stress that come with twins and kids in general, but twins specifically. So I kind of laughed when I saw that study. Uh, not much to say on that, except it's kind of like a joke to get us into <laughs> um, some more, not serious, but a little bit more of what I've seen as a benefit of having twins. The first real thing I was going to say is that... Wait, 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 wait. I got to respond to that. How, oh, go what, for it. What data, like, twit, is that a real thing? They live longer? Uh, twin moms. It was a study done over a period of years. It's uh, where they, the women who had twins lived longer than the ones who didn't. Like significantly longer or like a few I days? I don't recall. No, no, no. More than a few days. I'd say years. What about what about dads? Uh, I don't think that they did it on oh, dads. Oh, no age benefit for dads. Well, women tend to live longer than men anyway. Yeah, but we're talking about the difference if they had twins. I was yeah, curious if I don't if know if there was a correlation, longer. but also... I, during the years of the study, I would say it was more of what you think of when you think of an old traditional type lifestyle where the mom was with the twins or the children more and the dad was at work. So I don't know that oh. had a correlation on that. Oh, your dad shaming. Okay. I guess. No, you. no, no, no. You asked. I'm just telling. Okay. Okay. All right. Any other thoughts on that? No, I'm just, I, I'm hoping I still get that benefit, you know? Okay. As a as a present twin dad, maybe I'm gaining some longevity. Yeah, hopefully. I hope so. Okay, so the first real thing for me that I have experienced is having twins made me less anxious and let more things go, which sounds honestly counterintuitive because my life got a lot more stressful feels negative, and I'm not meaning it in a negative way, but and so it's chaotic. I don't. I can't think of a word that means a lot going on that's not negative. Um, it just is. You're having two children. It gets more chaotic than having no children. And I talked about this in episode 11 of the Boy, Girl, Mom, and Dad podcast. It's called Having Kids Made Me Loosen Up. And basically, I knew going into the twin pregnancy that a lot of stuff was going to be out of my control. And it kind of made me sit back and think, okay, well, I'm just going to let that roll and do the best that I can. And that's honestly transitioned into motherhood with me, which I feel like is really nice because if I had just had one, my personality is a little bit more type A and I wouldn't say controlling as in controlling others, but I like to control my scenario. And again, there's just so much that I wasn't going to be able to control. And so it just made me loosen the reins and just not 
dive into as much anxiety. I I did have somewhat of an anxious pregnancy just because of where we were before the twins. I had a miscarriage before the twins, so I I did think about that a lot. And I have a blog post that I can link about um, pregnancy after loss and just speaking through that experience. If if you're going through something like that, it is kind of uh, different than not having a loss before a pregnancy. And I just wanted to mention that because that is a different situation to me than like the parenting anxiety and things like that. But I don't know. I saw saw having twins as a huge benefit to me personally and my personality and being able to go with the flow more. So you feel like you're less anxious? Mm Mm-hmm. Compared to what I think I would have been with just one child. Like, I don't have the capacity to be anxious about... I think I do have still have an anxious personality, but I'm less anxious than I think I would be as a parent otherwise. Yeah. It's like I've described it before as I see the door that I could walk down the rabbit hole, and I'm like, no, I don't have time for that rabbit hole. Goodbye. <laughs> I can't even think about it. Like, I know it's there in the back of my mind, but I just have to kind of roll with the punches a lot more. And I'm, I feel like I'm better at that than I used to be. Yeah, I agree. And for you, you kind of had the opposite effect of having twins. So instead of loosening up, it made you button up a bit. What did you say? Um, I would say I like started procrastinating a little bit less with respect to what they needed. Like I still have a procrastination problem, I would say. But like, um, yeah, it it made me appreciate planning a little bit more and having the right stuff around a little bit more, you know, having the right things in their bags, their diaper bags and the suitcases and everything. Like, yeah, they made me, I wouldn't say like more, I don't know what the better version of the term anal is, but like, I prepare. (laughs) No, those are different in my mind. It, the first has like a more negative connotation, like what too controlling. Right. I don't think I've gone that far, but, um, I'm yeah, much more in appreciation of planning and preparing when it comes to the kids Mm -hmm. and family stuff. Yeah. The other thing you like to say in regard to having twins, what is it? What's your, what's your pop off when someone's like twins, you're like efficiency. Oh. World's most efficient pregnancy. Yeah. So yeah, if minimize pregnancy time, maximize child output. Yeah. So a lot of people just aim to have two children, whether it be personal reasons, financial reasons, all of that. In fact, you know, people love to tell us that, oh, one and done, you're good. But if that's something that, I don't know, pregnancy is not something everybody wants to go through. Some people love it, some people don't love it. And if you're looking for two children, it's, I'm not going to say it's easy, but it is less time overall being pregnant and you have technically your less time in general because they'll be usually the same grade and you know you're knocking it all out at once which kind of go ahead sorry good no um i think you probably have a piece of this in the later notes but um having two also i feel like makes you appreciate the phase that you're in because you get to com- like not compare them, but like see the differences in them in the same phase right away. You know, like you're in it with both of them in the same phase. Like they didn't hold their bottles the same way. You know, mm-hmm. there were like cute little things that were different, but you could see like they're right next to each other as opposed to having a one-year-old and a two-year-old or a two-year-old and a four-year-old or whatever. Like you're not having to remember back and oh, yeah. and consider how your kids are slightly different. Um, I like that, being able like, to see the differences yeah. like in real time. Yeah, I know some people, well, most people I'd say, like their second pregnancy was vastly different from their first. And then even raising that child was very different. I mean, you mm-hmm. yourself are a different person, even parenting at this point, or having your second. And at this point, you're kind of just like the same. I mean, they can still have their different perceptions of you, but you're the same. And yeah. I just realized something. We've talked about the opposite of this. So you kind of just led into it. Like if you have, uh, you know, you're different ages than your siblings, right? Which is typically the case if you're, tw- if you're not a twin or a multiple, um, the version of your parents you got is different from the version your mm-hmm. siblings got. But for twins, 
they get the same version of their parents. They do. That's they kind of still- cool. It is cool because I think they can, if like, not that trauma happens, but like they're able to relate more to each other, uh, you know, if something were to happen or go back and think like, hey, what did you think about this? And they do have almost the same viewpoint. I mean, I think they'll still have different. They had the same experience and maybe different Mm -hmm. perceptions, but the same experience. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. The reality. is. I like that thought as a parent of Cypress Nov, it's like, obviously we're not perfect and we're going to change, but like they're getting the same version of us. Mm-hmm. That's kind of yeah. cool. Yeah. I was wondering why you're smiling at me. It wasn't. I just annoying. haven't, I haven't thought of the twin piece of that, you know? Yeah. Anyway. Yeah. So like Nick said, you're kind of not having to remember per se, well, what did I do five years ago? Or, you know, Oh, things have changed. That type of thing. You're kind of doing it all at once and you don't have to really remember, I guess. Um, the best way to do this and the best way to do that. Yeah. I mean, there's advantages to both. I'm not necessarily saying this is better. It's just like, it's just interesting. You know, I mean, we may have more children. We don't know, but like, uh, it's just interesting if we didn't, like we were, if we don't rather we're our parenting experience is going to be consistent for both of them. (laughs) You know, that's kind of cool. It's interesting. Yeah. I was going back to what you said before that about, um, not having to remember how to bottle feed all that to kind of get us back on track. Oh yeah. 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 Which again, things also science changes, things change in that in general, but you're not overall having to be like, okay, wait, or so far ingrained and this is how you do it. And this changes. Um, you're not having to really go back and forth in that mentality. It's all at, all at once. And for us, these were our first, uh, full term. So it was, we don't know much, only what we've read. So but to your point also they get the same experience along that same efficiency thought you also have talked about this several times about the workload with twins and obviously it's a lot because it's two children but it's not black and white about double the work it is probably exponentially more expensive and people like to tell you oh buy one get one and it's like no i'm paying for everything they charge per fetus on the ultrasound but as far as the workload when they come it's not a cut and dry times two you've called it more about a 1.5 it's like a little bit more work uh yeah i mean the financing piece is separate i know you just mentioned yeah, let's that. Not worry about it. yeah um <laughs> yeah like i think that i mean we're still figuring this out but with nothing to compare twins to like we don't have a singleton before. Uh, it It is a lot, um, but I don't think it feels like twice as much. And yeah, one and a half is a good estimate. It's like, instead of changing one diaper, you're changing two diapers at the same time, you know, like back to back. I wouldn't consider that to be double effort, you know, like I'm still at the changing table. I put one down and I pick one up and finish the, di- but like I'm spending probably four minutes changing a diaper instead of three and I'm changing two, you know? So like in some ways it makes me feel more efficient, even though sometimes it's a bit more stressful in certain situations than I think yeah. having one child would be. Um, like the effort is not double in my mind, where I think the perception from the outside, especially those who haven't had twins or, or multiple children at really close ages, um, the perception is that it's just like exponentially harder the more children you add in. That's not my experience right now. Mm-mm. Some twin moms are going to get you for that last comment. Multiple what children close in age. I'm not trying to say it's the same, but like it, it you know, if we if we have a one year old and a two year old, like they're that are both in diapers, the c- scenario I just brought up is very similar. You know, like I'm still, it's not necessarily double work. I know it's different and nuanced because one might still be on the bottle and one might be in solid. So I'm not trying to say it's easier. It's just there's some overlap mm-hmm. in responsibilities of a twin parent. That is one of like the biggest thing I see on posted on twin uh, forums is more like, okay, another person just told me that they have kids that are a year apart or so, and that it's just like having twins, and they get really mad. Uh, but anyway, on to the next one. I asked our nanny. Well, hold on, we didn't talk oh. about the finance piece, or did you well, not we were want going to? to? No, I feel like that's a different topic. Unless you just want to touch on it. I mean, you kind of already said, I, I'll just be super brief. It's, it is double the cost. I think if you have two, tw- you know, 
twins. There's a very small number of situations where you can get a discount for having one more family member or two kids, but like typically you're not. Like I, I'm gonna we're, we're about to start applying for preschools and schools and stuff. Um, some of which we might have to pay for application fees and you know maybe tuition depending on where we go. I'm gonna be incredibly floored and surprised if any of them offer twin discounts. You know. Um, I don't think that's a thing in most places. Like we're still having to buy them an extra plane seat per kid. You know, we have to buy them an extra Disneyland ticket per kid after they're older than three. So it's, it is double the cost. But to keep us on the topic, which is the positives of having twins to Nick's point, there are, I would say quite a few places that offer a twin specific discount. If not, they offer like a, another sibling discount. Like there are gyms I've looked into for kids where they offer a, second child at like a 10% off discount. I know our doctor's office charges a fee for the like school papers and stuff like that, that they have to fill out. And it's more for two, but it's not double. It's, I forgot, I would be guessing if I guess guess the percentage off you get, but it's not, it's not times two. It's just a little bit more there. And, but, but I'd say also if we're going to make a positive spin on this too, like, yeah, there's two of them, but you know, when we go out to eat, I only buy one kid's meal. You know, the chance that they're going to eat the whole thing themselves right now is just or even choose they like chicken nuggets that day. Yeah. <laughs> and and when I when I did right now they get their own pouches to eat. Uh, but early on I would get two different flavors and then half and half because so they got two different flavors and then they they did they didn't get bored. I find they rarely will eat a full like bar, like they'll eat the Cerebelli bars and they typically won't eat a whole bar. I think one of them now will, but I would half them and they would each get a different flavor and or they would each just get a half. And so I actually feel like I'm saving food because just because with toddlers, I feel like there's so much food waste. Uh, But with twins, I just don't order times two. I usually order once and then they may eat off of my plate too because everything tastes better on a mom's plate. Just, it's science, honestly. Yeah, that's true. That's true. I asked our nanny what her favorite part of having twins is because she has worked almost exclusively with twin families. And she said, it's never boring. So if you're a person who needs adventure, uh, you're going to be on the adventure of a lifetime with twins. And <laughs> she said... I'm marking when- that as a clip. That's going to be a good clip. <laughs> uh she said she now gets bored when she just sits with one baby. She's like, what do I do with you? <laughs> so um, it, it's fun. I would say it's very, very, very fun uh, being a twin parent. Oh, it's incredibly fun. I also, I was thinking about this this morning. Um, I feel yeah. like the way that they imitate us is mm. different because they're twins. Like, you know, most kids, I would say all kids, maybe, I don't know. Like, I feel like imitating your parents is a normal thing. But yeah, like, parenting. Yeah. As an example, like if we just had Oliver, just had Cypress, they wouldn't really be able to imitate like cheers. Like if we have wine or a drink or something, we'll give a cheers to each other. Like Lauren and I will. And the kids, like I first started noticing that they would do it to each other, which is super cute in the first place. But also it's like they're in their own little worlds a little bit and they still, they give us cheers as well, which is really cute. But like, you know, if you don't have two, You don't get to see that kind of parroting, to use your term. You don't get to see that kind of mimicking where it's like there's two of you as the parrot and then there's two or more of the twins and they're in their own little mimicking world. It's kind of cute. You also get to see them parrot each other, which can be fun and not so fun at times. Like today when I heard screaming and saw them, I haven't really talked about this. Uh, We haven't really talked about it because we haven't found a full solution yet, but uh, they've just been climbing out of their cribs for, I don't know, the past couple months, I would say. At least two or three months i would say and this morning they were both out of their crib um and i'm gonna say like one of them i don't actually don't know which one because i haven't had time to go back and watch the video but one of them definitely egged on the other one i need to go back and i think we only have 24 hours of camera footage so i need to make sure to do that so i don't lose it but yeah yeah, they will also do this with screaming like if it for fun not cry screaming but like oh yeah they'll be in their high chairs and one of them like makes an animal noise and screams. And then the other one thinks, oh, great, screaming competition. And for like 30 seconds, they will go back and forth with high-pitched screams. Yeah. I mean, they're having a blast. And like, luckily, our neighbors don't care. But, you know, yeah. they, you're right. They egg each other on a little bit. And yeah, it's fun. Yeah. All right. This is one of, I think, my favorite things 
that I would liken to having twins is that I feel like I can do anything after having twins. Anything. Everything seems easier. Like <laughs> I carried how much weight of my belly of babies? I mean, they were seven pounds, one ounce and six pounds, 14 ounces. So basically that yeah. much weight of babies. And honestly, I don't, looking back, I don't know how I did it, to be honest. And I just Superhero. feel, I just feel really strong and that I was able to do that. Even like caring for two at once, like it's a lot, I'm not going to lie. And I just feel empowered, I would say. And I liken it to whenever we moved from Texas to California, we drove from Dallas to, I guess we ended up stopping in New Mexico that first night. So it was a long day. And Nick and I were driving in separate cars. Uh, we were not able to just switch off. So it was very tiring. So I think we drove about 15 hours that first day. Um, mm -hmm. We could have made it to LA and, and Which basically- is just over 50% of the drive, by the way, people. Getting out of Texas is more than half of that drive. Yeah. yeah. Uh, but we could have done it just in less than 48 hours, essentially two days but we ended up taking a little bit slower just so we could spend the night in palm springs or joshua tree was rather after that drive i felt like i could do anything i could drive any amount of distance i could travel any amount of distance so i don't know i feel similarly with twins and i feel like it, it empowered me to do hard things yeah and uh sorry singleton parents some things are harder with twins maybe not twice as hard but they're harder but to your point, the feeling of accomplishment, I think, is at least double. Like, you know, you feel awesome after you, like, get them in the car to go to the beach, you know, like little things like that. It's, yeah, it's empowering for sure. Yeah. That has to do with mental capacity and another mental ability that you're able to have, I think, really well after having twins is seeing two people who had the same controlled environment, your womb. Maybe they had the same meal like if you breastfed they'll have the same thing but either way basically eating the same thing same environment and then they turn out so differently even identical twins i know it's a different scenario which we can't relate to but even they have different fingerprints and you can often tell them apart from their belly button because they look different oh, and different personalities and different yeah. personalities but i feel like as a person who i really haven't been tainted per se from diet culture it, it hasn't hasn't ever really been something that affected me personally but i have so many friends who have been affected whether it be eating disorders things like that and you have the media everybody telling you different things to do and that this is the best thing to do and that it will yield this result but twins i think are a living example of you can do the same exact thing and get a different result and that's why so and so's fad diet or so and so's workout doesn't work for you is because you're a different person with a different body and i feel like it is very 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 apparent with twins because again basically same everything except obviously personalities and things like that and they're still so different which is just kind of crazy yeah like besides things that are objectively right and virtuous, like being a Dallas Cowboys fan, not everything works for everybody, you know? Mm-hmm. Yeah. There's another clip. <laughs> and the the point that I wanted to end on just for the parents is community. It's a really special community to be a part of the twin, not sisterhood, brotherhood, familyhood. There we go. And mm. I'm not even talking about you get a lot of attention, almost celebrity status of when you have twins. They're like, are those twins by a lot of random people? But you also meet so many twins and so many twin parents and you have an instant connection with them because they've been through what you're going through or they are going through what you're going through. And it's really nice to have those conversations. Whenever we were just in Paris, we were waiting outside of a restaurant and we, we struck up a conversation with a lady who was in from Spain for a business meeting and come to find out she's a twin. And it was just such a lovely conversation that we were able to, you know, talk about parenting. And she was saying how things that she wished was different growing up as a twin. And luckily, I think we were already implementing all the things that she suggested that she would have done differently, like not comparing the two or having one be like the strong one, one be the more uh, soft one. She's like, you know, those things carry wait into your adult life i'm like i know it i'm working on it like we don't compare things like that so it was empowering also to hear that but it was just so great to have those conversations with her and have an instant connection 
Yeah. She also gave interesting insight, um, like how she never felt like her birthday was hers, but she also never would choose to celebrate it separately from her twin. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I thought that was like such a profound and special thing to hear. And also it's cool. Like when you're hearing to your point, perspectives of people who are twins and grew up that way, you're kind of hearing like ways in which your kids could be feeling and experiencing life mm-hmm. um, even before they're able to like clearly speak, you know? So yeah. it's a cool little glimpse into the future and into the minds of your kids. Yeah. And what she said specifically about that is she said, you know, it was never my birthday. I always have to think about getting my sister a gift. And I was like, oh, that must have been hard. Like, do you wish you celebrated on different days or something? She looked at me kind of aghast and said, no, if it She said never, I think. She was like, no, never. Yeah. Never. It's not my birthday without my sister. If if she's not there, it means something's wrong. Like we're in a fight or, you know, she's not there. So um, yeah. it was just a really beautiful conversation. I don't, I don't even remember her name. I wish I did, but she was great to speak to. Yeah, she was awesome. Yeah. If you're thinking about getting a gift for a twin mom, I could not recommend Lunia enough. Or maybe you're a twin mom and you need to buy yourself a gift. Lunia works great, especially as we head into the holiday season. Their washable silks are so dreamy. My favorite is the t-shirt set. And they came out with a really beautiful wine color recently. And they're just so cozy and chic and make you feel uh, special even whenever your hair might be in a bun and you have uh, milk stains or just sweat coming off of you because motherhood, am I right? But would highly recommend getting them. Nick actually has a pair of the men's set. Lago is their men's brand, L-A-H-G-O. And they're, did you like them? Oh, they're awesome. They feel great. Yeah. So if you would like to try them and get a discount, you can use code BGMAD for 15% off your first order. BGMAD. We covered the benefits of being a twin parent or our favorite parts, the positive parts, the parts we love. But there's also some positives for our children, our twins. And the first one that I think of is just immediately empathy for another person. Obviously, we're their parents, but I think the parent-child relationship is a little bit different than peer-to-peer, someone their own age, and they're able to learn empathy early on, which I think can only serve you well in life. Yeah, like they're, uh, you know, we have them apologize to each other when, you know, even if there's an accident and they've clearly accidentally or uh or intentionally wronged the other one or hurt the other one um they're fairly comfortable apologizing to each other uh which i think is really cool and to your point like the sibling relationship is different than you know the child to mother and father like you know i think back like i feel like it always feels weird when your parents tell you to apologize to them not that we shouldn't but just like i don't know to your point that that teaches you as much empathy and consideration of your actions as doing it for a peer, especially one that you care about as much as a twin. Well, and I say to them, if one of them, you know, they like their personal space sometimes. And let's say that all of us touching Cyprus and Cyprus doesn't want to be touched. Well, later on, Cyprus then messes with Olive and I'm like, hey, remember whenever Olive didn't want you to touch her or you didn't want Olive to touch you? That's what's happening now. And that's a really cool thing to be able it's it's right in front of them i don't have to you know explain this idea it's like living out right in front of them yeah along with empathy another thing they learn is to share they have to basically share everything from birth and sure they have their own car seats their own beds things like that but we don't buy two of the same toy typically i think we have one toy that we have two of we have a that- few we Kind of like we have a few that are, but you're right. The majority of our toys are individual and not duplicated. Well, and I would say because with twins, it's like you can buy two, but they might just fight over the one. Right, right. Yeah, sharing is something that it's still hard. I mean, it's still hard to learn how to share, but I feel like it's a little bit easier because they have basically consistent practice with it. Yeah, that's true. I mean, we also have like, we have things that are similar, like same category but they're not the same thing, um, which I think kind of helps them like want their thing, you Mm -hmm. know? Uh, Like we have a doll and a rabbit that are like the same kind of thing. We got them from the same shop. 
same brand, I think, right? Mm -hmm. They're like very similar. And Cypress usually likes the bunny and Olive usually likes the doll, but sometimes they will trade. Um, but yeah, either way, it's teaching them sharing. Yeah. And with that specifically, with those toys, it might be basically not the point you're trying to make, but it was very like, hey, Cypress, here's yours. And hey, all of yeah. yours, where I feel like a lot of the other stuff that we have, the, like the one we bought two of was not a, this is for you, this is for you. It was a shared toy where I yeah. feel like they have a little bit better uh, feelings, whether it in both sharing and not sharing. I feel like it's a little bit better with things that are theirs because it is pretty much yeah. always their choice. Yeah. Um, a little bit harder with the ambiguous uh, gifts and toys. Yeah. I mean, to your point, like I cannot imagine that a singleton is hearing share language near as early as we have to use it with our twins, you know, like with us saying, um, you know, oh, I know that you want this monster truck. All is playing with it right now. It'll be your turn next. You know, like I know like with Miss Rachel and other stuff that people consume like it's presented to them but like putting it into practice to life scenario your turn and and to need to share to give up something that you've been playing with when it's somebody else's turn like that kind of stuff i i'm i'm um uh not projecting but like i'm extrapolating right like my assumption is that you don't really encounter those until you're in heavy contact with other kids which theoretically singletons don't get that as early as twins and multiples do yeah, only child singletons. I would agree with that, unless they're in oh, a lot that's of. That's what I meant. You're right. Yeah. Unless they're in a lot of groups and and classes and things like that, but even that is not yeah. in the home. Which I feel like it's it sharing in the home teaches you to share elsewhere. Kind of along those same lines about having to share. You have they have a built-in partner from the very beginning. They have a friend and someone that they can play with. That's also helpful to you as a parent. If you're trying to get things done, they have each other to keep them entertained and they do rely on us. They come to us. They have my sister when we were in uh, Europe, she came with us to help. And she said, just so you know, it's very obvious that they have secure attachment with you, which that's a whole nother uh, discussion of like secure attachment and what that means. But my point is, is that they have each other and they do come around us, but they do have each other to play with. And I they're around a lot of kids who were born and raised in the pandemic, which is a different environment, was a different environment. There were the social scenarios and things like that that they were not able to be a part of is apparent. And I feel like having a twin, even in a scenario like the pandemic, they at least have another person that they are around consistently. Yeah. I think having the built-in partner is really awesome. I mean, I, I feel like they're already exhibiting like best friends, you know, and they're, they're like, they follow each other around and they're, you know, I, it's also like, we saw, we checked people in at church yesterday that were like, I don't know if they were siblings. I think they were just like friends. Right. Um, and they like were following each other in and they were clearly like comfortable with each other. You know, one was kind of hesitant to go into the crowd of the, all the other kids. And one was a little more comfortable with it. And they were like walking in with each other, kind of comforting each other. And I, it made me think of Cypress and Olive. Um, and it kind of makes me think of this point, like they're always, whether they're happy with each other in that moment or not, they're always going to be a support system and a partner to each other. Yeah. Yeah. Can you, I know we don't want to talk about it, but just cause you said it, can you define the attachment thing you just referenced? Um, sure. But I'm going to have to Google. Oh, I um, thought you just, well, isn't it in layman's terms, just like they're more comfortable with their parents when their parents no, are around? It's a positive relationship. There's different attachment theories. To answer Nick's question, I'll kind of give a what is attachment theory in a bubble. I'm just going to read this here. But in 1960s, psychiatrist John Bowlby formulated attachment theory after studying how infants reacted when separated from their primary caregivers. He then classified their behaviors by assigning each an attachment style, meaning the pattern and the way a person relates to others. So this is just one of those styles is what you're saying. Yeah. Um, so the difference, the different kinds of attachment are secure chat. The different kinds of attachment are secure attachment, which means the child grows up having a good attachment with their parent or caregiver and generally feels safe and content and explorative. 
there's anxious attachment, which is when the child is emotionally distant and re reluctant to discover his or her surroundings, and the caregiver is often disengaged. Um, then the child subconsciously believes they'll be let down by their caregiver, and that follows mm. them through life. And then avoidant attachment, which is when they develop a dismissive style, when their character when their caregiver is neglectful, inconsistent, and unresponsive to a child's needs, and they lose trust and decide to completely detach. Mm. And then fearful avoidant attachment, which is kind of, I feel like you can figure out what that is from it. But basically the child creates, basically the child develops this when the caregiver shames them for showing an emotional need. So think back to when you were a kid, if you cried and your parent got mad at you or told you were a baby, that impacts you know, how you grow up. And then there's a quiz and things like that you can take, but those are the four styles. Yeah. Okay. That's helpful. Those attachment styles are interesting. I actually didn't know that's what your sister was referring to. Um, I thought she was referring to them being just comfortable with us in general, which I think is a piece of this. Yeah. Her little therapist brain at work. Yeah. Um, but yeah, we could have like a whole episode on that. I think that's really interesting. I would be interested to read this study too. Um, I also am curious what the drawbacks of each of those are, because I assume it's not like one sounds better than the other in some of those, but I don't no, no secure. It's I hear what you're asking. Secure attached. Like I think what you're thinking about more is like the parenting styles of like, okay, there's helicopter parent and there's I forget what the other ones are. But for this, the best is secure attachment. The others are how which you can have negative things happen within a secure attachment. It's just about how that they grow up thinking and that you're better a like nurturing their nature, if you will. Sure. Um I'm just saying like I could see how a secure attachment pattern could also turn into dependence a bit and assuming that your parent is always going to be there. So I wonder yeah. if there are unintended negative consequences of that, even though it may be presented as the best option. That's what I'm trying to say. I think that, I don't know, I'm not studied in this, but I would say that if there is a bad thing, it probably would be crossing over into anxious attachment. Yeah. Well, we should talk about it. Yeah. Stay tuned. You kind of mentioned it whenever you discussed the kids walking into church, but the last point I have on just the benefits and fun nature of having twins is their bond. Uh, you know, you sure they hug each other, they kiss each other, they they do really sweet things. My favorite thing, thinking back, was early on, very early on, like you could say that he didn't know what he was doing, but there were times when Olive was upset and Cypress would just pat her on the back. Yeah, before yeah, it, I just without remember, being asked. Oh right, this is like I'm holding both of them boarding a plane. I remember all of not being very happy, and Cypress yeah. just started like patting his hand on her back, and they were, I want to say they were six months old or something like that. Like mm -hmm. it wasn't, it wasn't old enough to like because now they will, you know, they'll do that on a baby doll or they'll do that. Even we might ask them like, oh hey, can you come here and show some love to? your sibling just because they're having a hard time and they definitely do that but the bond the bond is sweet yeah it's very sweet for sure yeah i mean it's also like pretty easy to care to to see that they care about each other mm -hmm. you know like that to your point like they you don't pat somebody on the back if you don't care if they're okay you know like yeah 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 and i think that where it differs and again i don't know because we don't have them but as far as like you know, two singletons, obviously they can love on each other and things like that, but there's something special about being the same age and just being able to kind of read the emotions and how they're feeling because you've been around them their whole life. And I do think that it was, they were more connected early on than they would have been if they were two different ages. Yeah, for sure. It's speculation, but you know. Yeah, I agree though. Feels that yeah. way. Are there any other favorite things or positive things that you can think of that we maybe have missed? Uh, when, they get in, when they get in high five loops. When they what? When they get in high five loops with each other. Like they'll, <laughs> if they see us do it or we've done high fives with them or something, they'll go up to each other and they'll say, sissy high five, sissy high five. And then they'll like keep doing different ones and different fist bumps just with each other. It's very cute. Yeah, there's honestly so many cute things that we could share with you, but overall, we just wanted to encourage you. 
At the end of every episode, we typically have an Ask BG Mad where someone writes in, whether it be on email or on Instagram, and asks us a question and has us weigh in. And this one, of course, is twin specific. And so the question we have is, what is one piece of advice that you would give to an expecting a twin family? Do you want me to go first? Yeah. Yeah. That's a big one. Yeah. I already knew what it was, so I have had a little bit longer to think about. But I'd say the piece of advice I would give would be to stick to what works best for you. Your parenthood journey will likely look very different from your friends who just have one child or have children of different ages. And it'll be really hard to not compare yourself and what you're able to get done or even, you know, what they decide to do, you know, take a kid to the park. It's harder to take two kids to the park, uh, especially if they're the same age. And then they're at the runaround stage where they're not really listening to you per se. And you just need to figure out what's best for you and do it. For example, we combo fed the whole time, meaning they had breast milk and they, they had formula. They had breast milk until about six months. And we also didn't do straight baby led weaning. We did partial purees, partial baby led weaning. It It's what worked for us. And I kind of had to just keep my head down. I talked to my doctor and if I had a question or something, I might ask a friend or research that. But ultimately, I had to just forge my own path and figure out what worked for me because it was not going to be what someone else was doing. And uh, just don't feel bad if your life looks different and you're not able to do a lot of the things that your friends can do because guess what? You're the one with twins and that's special. Yeah, that's a good answer. I'm trying to think it's really hard to pin down like one piece of advice. Um, also, I feel like a lot of what I'm thinking of can also apply to having one kid. Mm. Um, maybe the one that's coming to mind is I think it's always important to try and be as present as possible when you're with your child, whether it's twins or not. But I think you'll find with twins or multiples that you kind of have to be very present from a attention perspective, but also from a safety perspective. Like I can be, you know, off my phone and completely hanging out, fully immersed in Olive and whatever play we're doing, but Cypress can be tearing down a shelf behind us. <laughs> and, um, you know, if I'm fully present with twins, it means that I've kind of always got an eye on the other one, as well as watching and paying attention fully to the one I'm playing with. Um, I think that might be my advice. Like just be aware of all of your surroundings and be fully present without being too immersed in one of them. Uh, to add on to yours, I would say looking back, like you already, it's hindsight 2020, you know what you know now and you can't go back because then you wouldn't know now what you know, know then what you know now. Anyway, what I'm trying to say is that when I look back, I'm like, oh shoot, like I wish I would have soaked it in more. And like, I was just so tired and I wish I would have just, you know, I don't know. I think I did a good job, but I also didn't know what I was doing or what I was, you know, missing when I took a nap. And I think naps are important and I definitely should have taken them, but I just feel like I maybe missed some things. Like I didn't keep my eyes open enough, metaphorically speaking, because, and it just like goes by uh, it goes by so quickly and I'm not trying to just say that or make you feel sad, but it does. And I look back at the pictures and I'm like, I miss you, but it's also like the feeling I have for them now has just grown and looking at the pictures, I miss them because I didn't know them then. And I think that's part of my problem is I'm applying how I know them now and their personalities now and wanting to know them back then, but they hadn't developed yet. So I think it's kind of a mental war. <laughs> uh, because I think I would go back and do pretty much everything the same. And I can't do that if I change that. Yeah, that's a good one. I think it's like pay as much attention as you can and be as present as you can, which sounds cliche and normal for everybody, even if you don't have twins. But I would say also, I, I don't hear you putting yourself down, but just forgive yourself a little bit and that like you're going to miss more with having twins than, than you probably would with having one. And I'm not trying to say that to make you sad, but just like 
all you can do is make sure that you are as present as possible and try and look around and make sure you notice as much in the other as you do with the one you're currently paying attention to. But um, I don't know. It's special. It's like more special, but just don't be upset with yourself Yeah. if you've missed things because everybody will. Yeah. But on that note, we're going to do, you know, an opposite post to this. So not a negative post about twins, but just like things that are harder and not to be a negative post, but it's more going to be like, these are things you can think about so that you're prepared. So it's not just going to be a complaint fest. It's more like, yeah, you may not have thought- to look forward to. Yeah. And also it could be a good listen to for someone who maybe a family member who has kids, but doesn't have twins. Like, listen to this. These are how, ways you can support me. Like, I don't want to give too much away, but one thing is like, have more than one high chair. <laughs> I don't know. There are just uh, certain things that you experience when you have uh, two kids at the same age. Yeah. And it's a lot. special. There's Even some, when it's hard. I call them unique speed bumps. There you Not go. Not necessarily I like it. different or more. Just I like it. Overall, unique. we wouldn't. We love it and we wouldn't change it. And I wanted to give a couple other episodes if you're an expectant twin parent or you just want to, or you already have twins and want to learn more. We have episode five, why you should travel even with twins. We have episode seven, which talks about twins as individuals. Episode 19 was comparisonitis. Um, episode eight was what I wish I knew postpartum. And episode 17 was my regrets in pregnancy and postpartum. And so they could be really good lessons for you to learn and just have some other things to think about. So yeah. All good ones. Thank you for listening. Happy birthday, Cypress and Olive. We love you. Happy birthday. If you want to follow along with us, you can follow us at Instagram at boygirlmomdotcom. You can follow us on our website at boygirlmom.com. And you can listen to us, obviously, wherever you stream. YouTube, Spotify, Apple Podcasts, and more. We're there. See you next time. Yeah. Oh, P.S. You can subscribe to our newsletter. We send it out every Wednesday morning, and you get a little bit more behind the scenes and uh, kind of know what's coming up. Yeah, do that. Strong Thank you so much decision. for listening, and we'll see you next time. Thank, Thank you. you for growing with us. Bye. Bye. Boy, girl, mom, dad. Gotta wash those butts together. Triple guide you through with tips and tricks for boys and girls too.